Hello everyone. Happy Sunday. This is Simon with Ava Trade. I uh, feel much better, but still not 100%. So uh, please forgive my voice and maybe uh, occasional coughing. I'll try to do my best to avoid that. A few things about myself. Uh, my name is Simon Friedman, Senior Account Manager with Ava Trade. I started to trade in June of 2000 as a prop trader in New York City. And uh, it's been over 23 years being involved in this amazing industry. Uh, I did it for about 11 years, the intense prop trading, and then I moved into, as I call it, less stressful trading, and I started to mentor and educate other traders. And currently, I'm very happy having have an opportunity to serve our customers at Apple Trade. So uh, the, for new people, I just uh, scroll through it, assuming we all know it. For new people, uh, a few words. Uh, what we do here, we try to create a plan for the week. Uh, it's a mix of uh, some fundamentals, technicals. So we go through indices, stocks, commodities, and forex, trying to make sense and trying to make a plan. As I like to quote whoever was uh, the one saying it, uh, traders like to use the phrase, they say that you plan your trade and then you trade your plan. Of course, there are no guarantees, especially in trading, but it creates more organized way of doing things. Risk warning, you can find the full statement at abatrade.com. What we do here, it's purely educational, of course. These are the channels that I highly recommend for you to use. You have uh, Telegram, you have uh, X or Twitter, or former Twitter. I don't know what's the official status on that. And um, a YouTube channel is my favorite. And um, the reason being, you can find so many materials there. You have uh, educational material, you have uh, tutorials, you have webinars. So if you're missing or you think you're gonna miss a webinar, don't be, don't be upset. You can always go back and find it on our YouTube channel and you can watch it at your convenient time. So uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, please uh, feel free to put likes, to share with your friends if you find it interesting. Also, you can subscribe and click on the bell so you'll be notified on things coming in on a daily basis. Okay, so... Um, a few things before we go to the economic calendar. Uh, we had an eventful week. We had some interest rate decisions. We had uh, job data from US. Uh, market is continuing going higher, the equity markets. So this week, we're going to take a look at the charts uh, shortly. All three uh, US indices had move up. Uh, if we talk about cash indices, S&Ps and Dow Jones made record highs for the weeks. And NASDAQ was, uh, or still is, a little bit short of the all-time highs, even though some of the stocks within NASDAQ had tremendous amount of moving to the upside, especially Meta or Facebook or the parent of the Facebook company. We'll take a look at the moment. So... Um, this week, uh, we have a few events. This is the economic calendar. And again, for a few people, I'm going to explain a few important points. So this is public information. First of all, you can find it on our web trader or the app. Also, you can use uh, third-party providers. As I said, they all report from the same source at the same time. You can filter what uh, applies to you, your trading, uh, here, what I do, I just take uh, high impact events, as you could see, they're all in red here. And um, these are the most important things that's happening this week. So let's start. And again, uh, some people have tendency of asking how important it is. If I'm a technical trader, why do I need uh, fundamentals and so on? I mean, I'm not going to go deep into discussing it, but in a simple logical way, it's important to be aware of certain things happening that might and will or, or will affect the markets, like uh, interest rate decision, NFP numbers, uh, rate decisions, and so on. When uh, they happen, that creates volatility usually in the market. So even if you totally disregard fundamentals, 
you can't really avoid that uh, increased volatility and spikes of the market. So it gives you a little bit of a uh, advanced kind of a warning. So you could stay away from trades or the opposite. If you like that volatility, you can participate. Depends on what you want to do. But simply speaking, knowing that certain things are happening creates a little bit of order as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, Monday, I was trying to research uh, where is he speaking. I, I wasn't able to. So this is the information we have that is that uh, the chair Powell speaks on Monday. Uh, then we have trade balance from Australia. We have PMI numbers from China and PMI numbers from US. And that completes the Monday. Tuesday, we have a monetary policy statement from Australia and followed by press conference. Retail sales from European Union. Governor of Bank of Canada speaks same day. And employment data from New Zealand. Thursday, we have consumer price index from China. As you could see, we have uh, quite a few data from China. We'll speak about China when we get there. Uh, inflation expectations uh, from uh, Australia, sorry, from New Zealand, and the governor of Bank of Australia speaking after the press conference and the decisions the following day. Friday, we have CPI numbers from Germany. <coughs> for my coughing and uh, we have employment data from Canada usually they report together with NFPs for the US but uh, they didn't last week so these are the things that again uh, this is only the high impact there's much more you can filter through them see what's relevant for you okay all right so uh, as you know sometimes I like to post uh, certain uh, screenshots from articles so this is the article that I found on the marketwatch.com and it reads here 1987 stock market crash has lessons for traders convinced F fed will slash rates in 2024 uh, interesting article if you have time to read it it explains when uh, after raising the interest rate and then they cut the interest rate and then we had the Black Monday of October 1987. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean it's going to happen or it won't happen. It's just uh, the analysts, they like these drastic things both ways. Uh, one day they convince everyone that things are so nice and, and pitchy and positive and we're avoiding the recession. And next day, as you could see, they, they, they create this... Uh, doomsday uh, prediction reality. So it, I guess it's their job, like uh, any other press, they need to create something that catches attention. Uh, nevertheless, it's always good to know your history. So this is something that uh, you can read. You can find an article at uh, marketwatch.com. OK, so uh, we're going to move now to the MetaTrader 4. And uh, again, uh, we had interest rate decision on Wednesday by Feds. We have Powell speaking. And um, I was listening to, I try every time to listen to a press conference just to see, you know, uh, how how he's uh, dodging the bullets, the questions of all the press representatives. So uh, it looks like uh, the Feds are not so eager to cut, definitely not in March. And they play the same music or the same songs that uh, we'll be watching data as it comes and so on and so on. The few provocative questions, actually, one, one guy had um, strength to ask Powell directly if uh, about his plans to stay after the elections because he mentioned that uh, uh, in any event, uh, he, he reacted to it. Uh, he didn't like the question much. So he said, uh, we are focusing on our work. I didn't really uh, have a chance or time to to think about being uh, or staying longer and so on. Anyway, so it just shows you how they're trying to really ask the questions that will uh, provoke the chair of FED. OK, so uh, as I mentioned, China, we'll start with China. Also, I read a few articles. You can find them on uh, on. Uh, 
on the website. So uh, one, they said that uh, Chinese moms and pops are not buying any stocks. They can't afford any more losses. So that, that was one. And the second one, that the tourism in China is really slowing, both outside and inside. They're not traveling much. And also less, less visas are being issued for the tourists to come to China. So uh, a lot of pressure there also. Uh, some analysts are uh, trying to see what's with the aviation, with the flights, and they were predicting that everything will go back to maybe 70, 80 percent of the pre-pandemic of 19, oh, 2019, but it didn't. So, um, and again, if you're looking at uh, China uh, index. You could see the things are not so great, and we're slowly zigzagging to the downside. If you take weekly chart, as you could see here, we're clearly making lower lows, definitely lower highs, lower lows. And here we had a little bit of consolidation. And this past week, we erased the two previous weeks of advancing. And uh, if you remember, we spoke about it on the monthly chart if we did break below this previous month we might go and retest the lows from which we shoot up and that was the pre-pandemic 2019 and the low there was uh in january of uh, 2019 this is the monthly chart each candle represents a month so 10,182 and it looks like every time we show a little bit of a hope just being erased by the selling sellers pushing it down. So definitely we'll continue watching China. We'll have some data coming in today. And uh, we, we did discuss things that the government is trying to take measures to inject capital into the economy and the banking system. Apparently, things are not really working. Uh, Japan, we had uh, three three last days of the last week trying to, cl to climb up. And a lot of it to do with, of course, US markets going higher, also yen cooled down a little bit. So we are facing this level right here. So let's move to US indices, as we mentioned. Um, what we see here, these are the futures of the current contracts, but uh, the cash indices, they did make uh, consecutive highs, and uh, S&P 500 had a, cons a seventh consecutive record day. So you could see it with all-time highs. The only thing on Friday we did retrace the last uh, the last part of the session we sold, so we didn't close at the highs. And uh, Dow Jones right here. According to analysts, has a nine uh, record highs uh, so far this year, and similar story after hitting. Let's bring the one-hour chart after hitting the all-time high at 7 p.m. GMT. We hit 38,881. We retraced about 150 points, closing at 38,739. So. We are at the high, at the record high territories, and as I mentioned, the Nasdaq is uh, very close to all-time highs. The index uh, doesn't show it here because again, this is the future, but the index is about three percent from the record high. So these are the indices. Also worth uh, uh, taking a look at German index. So you could see here, we're also fighting for that uh, all-time high and uh, retracing from there and the uk had a nice recovery but here if, if you take uh, major us and european indices it's not as strong uh, even though we are about the all three major moving averages and also worth uh, mentioning i don't know if you had the chance here we have something they call golden cross when the 50 moving average crosses above. So uh, 
maybe that could be a little bit of a booster among the analysts. Let's see if uh, they'll mention anything. Okay, so these are the indices and we'll move to stocks now. We had a lot of actions last week. We had uh, a major stocks, uh, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Amazon, Meta reporting. So you could see here, it was a little bit of a sell off of Microsoft and moved to the upside. And if you take the higher time frames, we're close to the all time highs. Google wasn't doing so great. The earnings, the stock gap down. Friday, we tried to recovery. But if we do continue higher here, we need to close the gap first. We'll see if uh, the market condition will help. Um, Apple. Apple initially reacted uh, to the negative side as uh, the slowdown in China affects the iPhone uh, segment, which is the biggest segment of the earnings for Apple. But uh, the following two days, we had a little bit of recovery. Take a look. We had a gap down on Friday and recovery to the upside. So you could see it on the weekly chart that uh, after double top here, close to 200 all-time highs, we had 199.51. That was a week of December 10th. Since then, there was a lot of uh, cautious reports on China and other things. Uh, as you know, uh, they started uh, orders for the virtual reality device, I think on the second, uh, which was uh, Friday. Uh, I think CEO himself, he was at the uh, the main store in New York City when uh, I think the first buyer got that uh, virtual reality device, three and a half thousand dollars. So uh, we clearly had the negative week, but towards, uh, towards uh, the end of the week, Friday, we had a nice recovery here. Amazon, success story. Uh, across the board, they're doing much better. So you could see here, we just did uh, raise our head above the high of uh, March of 2022. We closed higher. And uh, let's see if that continues. And the most successful story was the Meta, the parent of the Facebook. Uh, it looks like in one day, there was the biggest daily gain for the company ever, 205 billion. They reported great revenues on advertisement. And also they uh, announced for the first time uh, quarterly dividends for the stockholders. So there was a lot of articles, you can check it, check the details, and it looks like uh, the CEO of the company is uh, going to gain about $700 million just on dividends. And he's going to hit, get hit by the tax and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into those details. They're not really important. But uh, uh, the bottom line that the, the numbers came very nice, uh, higher than expected. As you could see here, and a super strong week. The stock moved about 20%. And uh, also dividends uh, might be attracting more people to buying the stock. So just to give you a few numbers here on Meta, uh, they will be paying 50 cents a share for the quarterly uh, dividends. Uh, they reported uh, fourth quarter results of $5.33 per share, and consensus was $4.82. So they definitely beat the numbers. And the revenues, they reported uh, $40.11 billion. And um, the advertisement part of it is $38.71 billion. So as you could see, they're really doing a great job in the advertisement there. 
Okay, so big, big, uh, big players had uh, nice moves this past week, and um, I'm still wondering uh, with all these moves to the upside. Nasdaq didn't mention, to, uh, didn't manage to make the all-time high, so that's a little bit strange. Uh, let's see how this new week starts. Uh, also, we had uh, Chevron and Exxon reported earnings, so that makes results. Um, Exxon, uh, the stock fell 0.4% on reports, and Chevron had an upside move. As you could see here, they reported better than expected. Okay, now for this week, we again, last week we had 100 stocks of S&P 500 reported. This week we also have about 100 stocks reported. You can research and see what works for you. I just want to bring up two stocks that uh, we normally uh, follow sometimes. Disney is reporting on Wednesday. Uh, it's a very controversial company. As you know, a lot of things have been happening. They've been having issues with the streaming. The CEO came back, gave a little bit of a boost. Then a sell-off came again. And it looks like here in the weekly chart, we're trying to get out. We just broke to the previous high. And uh, on the daily chart, you could see it clearly that we are above the previous attempt here. High of 96.41. And we're building, we're having some consolidation here. So they are reporting on Wednesday. Let's see if uh, Disney manages to uh, inject some positive momentum here. And Uber has no issues. The stock is the all time highs on the vertical advance here. And uh, let's see if. Uh, if these earnings on Wednesday will boost more confidence among the shareholders, the stock go higher, or we might see the opposite effect and some correction there. Again, I apologize for coughing occasionally, and it's a little bit hard for me to speak. Can't wait for it to go away. Um, we'll move to commodities now, and uh, we'll go quickly through a few things. Now, before going to commodities, it's uh, worth mentioning that 10-year uh, yields are back above 4%, so it's at 401, closing on Friday. So logically, uh, that would put pressure on gold, and it's you can see it right here after a nice attempt of advancing here. On Thursday, we had a high of uh, 2065.31, and then Friday, was sold again, but we are holding steadily above the 50 moving average here. So we'll be watching those yields. And uh, of course, uh, when we get to dollar, that uh, should have the opposite effect on the US dollar. We'll take a look at the moment. So gold sensitive to that, uh, to the 10 year yields, it reacted right here to the jobs. This is the jobs report where I had a uh, huge. I think 303,000 jobs were added. Uh, it's important, 1,000 here, 1,000 there, but much more than expected. So uh, as you could see uh, that uh, a classical scenario that the feds are watching that and uh, as the data comes in strong, they're not in a rush to cut the rates in this case. So. Uh, uh, again, it's a very controversial because some analysts says that we are in the stage where the good news should be a good news, but it doesn't look like it because normally, forget about all the Feds and QAs and QEs and everything else, normal market conditions when the jobs are strong, it's very good for the market. Um, again, we'll find out. We'll find out what happens here. Uh, we'll see how uh, the public digests all the data that uh, includes the interest rate decision and some uh, Powell's uh, remarks and, of course, the job data. So in any event, gold is sitting here 
uh, on the 50 moving average, 2065 is the next resistance to the upside. Uh, copper, as we saw China, copper should be selling and this scenario worked nicely here. Let's see, three consecutive days down. And uh, China, we had uh, green day, red day and the sell-off. So copper has reacted it be even before. So um, where are you? This copper. So uh, we just break below the 50 moving average. Let's see how China continues. We might go and uh, retest this consolidation area here. Uh, oil disappointed everyone. As we know, there was an uh, unfortunate event when the Iran's backed uh, militia uh, attacked the military, US military base on the uh, Iraq Syria border. Three military personnel were dead and uh, many injured, and US warned they will uh, retaliate. And they did. So um, some analysts were participating, uh, some issues in the region were um, heating up. And they were predicting that oil would move higher. And oil actually did react initially, I think, right here. And after hitting the 200 moving average, we sold. And again, uh, I'm not into politics or anything, but uh, a lot of things uh, you can hear and, and read about this retaliation in the US, which was kind of a joke. You know, they're trying to teach Iran a lesson and they tell Iran exactly what they're going to do, what they're not going to do in advance, a week in advance almost. So that's not really teaching a lesson, they're just showing weakness. Again, that's my personal opinion. Uh, so it's not me, but uh, the analysts are saying that uh, that they had time to to remove their personnel and, uh, and ammunition and everything. They pretty much told them, we're gonna hit you here. And at this time, and you <laughs> give them time to do whatever they want. Anyway, I know I sound judgmental, but it's a joke. If you wanna show power, you show power. And uh, some generals were speaking, I was watching some uh, Fox reports and others over the weekend. I think this attack was uh, by US was uh, on Friday night. They hit some targets. Uh, and I think the main thing was to show that uh, the US bomber can travel all the way from Texas to anywhere in the world and complete the mission. All right, that's good. But uh, I don't know what was completed as a mission. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move on from this topic. So uh, crude oil, nevertheless, uh, was disappointed by a lack of heat in the Middle East, I guess. and. Uh, sold here natural gas i uh, was sitting right here about two building up something uh again last time we were sitting here it was march of last year almost a year ago 11 months ago so let's see what's this build up we're gonna do oh we'll do here okay it's natural gas and uh Worth watching cocoa as it advances. If you remember here, I mentioned, I think last week, that uh, it could be a reversal candle, but it didn't play out. Since then, we had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive sessions to the upside, and we're just on the vertical. And again, it's all fundamental, simply a lack of physical cocoa. And I think that was the weather related and other reasons, and especially in Ivory Coast, the biggest producer. So uh, that's our cocoa. Uh, let's move to Forex really quick. And we start with dollar index. And just to remind us that 10 year yields are back at four. So also it helps the dollar climb. But a nice move after this uh, uh, sewing action on the 200 moving average here. So you could see a lot of tails up and down every single session. And finally, Friday, we had to move up and we did close at the highs. So uh, if dollar continues higher, I would be watching this 104.17 level. The initial move to the upside before the sell-off. 
and you could see if you draw this line about 104.15 also if you look left it makes sense it was resistance that it supported the high high so it's a series level also we have 100 moving average on the way uh, let's see if uh, we get there and if we do let's see how we act we might see resistance and then moving lower we might see breaking up moving higher uh, the weekly chart also you can see it clearly it's a serious level a lot of actions here 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 rejected it and we're on the way there after making a higher low against the previous one so that's dollar index and of course if we go through majors we probably be seeing now them being closer to support and here you go if you remember we spoke about uh, pound being right in the middle between 126 128 friday we almost hit that 126 we hit 126.13 closing at the lows euro the same thing we did break that 108 to the downside usd cad bouncing on the weakness of the oil and the strength of the US dollar hitting that 200 moving average here both Australian and New Zealand dollar selling and even the Swiss franc is weaker than the dollar now so we had a nice move as dollar you know what let's take a look at the pair that we haven't been looking for a while USD knock Norwegian kroner it's sensitive to the oil prices so take a look on this um, less move on oil to the downside and the strength of a dollar the move to the upside so some of the traders might actually look at this at uh, this pair for this for some actions now yen uh, we did have a nice move to the uh, to the upside and we're back to facing resistance on a dollar yen this was the move on January 17th, the high of 148.52. Let's correct it and leave it there for upcoming week. Let's see how it works out. 148.52. Okay. Again, if you look left, a lot of actions here. Support, resistance, a lot of actions here. So, uh, again, yen, uh, we know the last uh, time around. The last month uh, there were no changes they're still in a minus 0.1 percent interest rate and uh, at least they give us some clarity that they they need to be discussing some salary increases with the uh, unions or whatever they call them there and only after that they will start uh, the actions as far as the interest rate so that's around april we are now beginning of february but uh, I also know that Bank of Japan has tendency to do things secretly and uh, catch everyone by surprise. They just like that. They're very famous for interventions and other things by central bank. So uh, definitely we'll continue watching the yen. Now here it's very simple. 148.50 we're going to watch that level and against the other currencies. As you could see here there was a con uh, still a lot of consolidation at the current levels. We're not uh, breaking any uh, any higher against the yen, so it shows that yen is close to that move. Again, I'm not trying to convince everyone and build this expectation that yen is a it's an amazing opportunity, but it could be. It's been uh, negative territory as far as the interest rate for a very long time. And the other majors are, I mean, U.S. at that five and a quarter, others at four percent, five percent, and so on. So definitely, when they pull that trigger, the Bank of Japan, we might see a tremendous move of Japanese yen to the upside. All right, so uh, that's um, forex, and uh, let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin really quick. Uh, as you could see here, after hitting the forty thousand and being a little bit below for a few days. We did rebuild, and we are closer now to 43, 44,000. Now, Kathy Woods, or Kathy Wood, Woods, I think, is a um, CEO of uh, the ARC Fund. She's big on uh, Bitcoin. 
She has these crazy predictions on the price levels. I don't want to even mention them. But she's very optimistic. She's uh, very invested. And uh, she's the one actually issuing the ETFs, among other entities. So uh, just to remind especially new people that we had this uh, kind of uh, buy the rumors, sell the news things. As the ETFs were in the process, in anticipation of that, Bitcoin was going higher. And then the moment they issued them, uh, the same day, and, and after that, we were selling, coming to around 40, and now we're trying to rebuild. So I mentioned to you, it's kind of uh, similar to what happened in IPO in the stocks. Pump and dump happens. They need to price them higher, issue them higher, so all the participants cash nice profits. And after that, uh, a lot of times you could see uh, kind of a, a selling trend till we hit a certain demand level. And then it starts rebuilding and reaching the real value. So I guess that's what's happening over here. Uh, that's normal scenario for IPOs. Of course, if there's, a, I remember I, when I started to trade in, uh, in uh, the year 2000, uh, and uh, among all these years when we had the bull market uh, or bubble markets or anything that that uh, kind of was right before the crashes of 2008 and the 2000, sometimes IPOs would just fly. You buy IPO at $10, ended up being 100, the next day would be 200. People were just buying things like uh, unsecured mortgages in 2008. In any event, we are uh, closer to the uh, to the resistance here, around 43, 44, 45. Let's see if we manage to continue. As I said, you can read, uh, just Google Kathy Woods. And uh, she's very uh, convinced that um, Bitcoin is going to millions. All right, guys. Uh, again, I apologize for not being fully functioning. I try my best. And uh, I want to wish everyone uh still a good weekend and uh, definitely a great and successful week we have a few events coming we have uh public and analysts and traders digesting a lot of data from last week that includes job data and the, and the fed's decision and the language and so on so we definitely should have a good week we are in february which is a shorter month but we do have 29 days this time around so uh, we should be back next week. Uh, I'll be happy to see you. Uh, also, uh, a little bit uh, of uh, information. I'm working on creating another webinar. Uh, it could be coming soon. It's a kind of a midweek webinar that would be following this one. And in the middle of the week, we'll try to analyze uh, our ideas and add new things and new developments. So I think it's going to add value to what we're trying to do here. All the best, guys. Enjoy the weekend. Have a productive week. We'll see you next Sunday.